Hi, welcome to Granny Moreno's Homestead. I want to have a little serious talk with you today about some things that affect women. Well, this is October, and in October, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, I've, I've had friends that died and passed on with breast cancer, and I've had friends that have survived it. But the other thing that we really don't hear that much about is domestic violence abuse. Yeah, and that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Domestic violence sometimes involves men, uh, as be, abused men, abused husbands. I mean, it, it does sound odd, but there are. But, it's mostly women, 95% of the people that are murdered from domestic violence and from a partner, it's 95% women. Now here's a shocking statistic. Way back when we had troops in Afghanistan and Iraq, the Huffington Post put out this report and in that report, and I'm going to read it because I can't remember that good. I want to get it right. Between 2001 and 2012, there were 6,488 American soldiers killed in Afghanistan and Iraq. That is sad. Now, the number of women that were murdered by their spouse or their lover or of some sort during that same period of 2001 to 2012 was 11,766 women. I didn't say it. Huffington Post wrote it. And it's true. So why do women stay in a volatile situation that may end up in their own death? Hmm. Why did I stay? Why do some of you stay? Well, here's the reasons. Usually it's financial. If you have money, you probably already spent it on the gigolo that proclaimed his love for you. <laughs> and you married the gigolo thinking he loved you. <laughs> but actually you had married a master manipulator, abusive man. Yeah, well, it happens. Purple is the ribbon color in October for domestic violence. And I thought, you know, how appropriate, how many times have women of domestic abuse worn their purple bruises under their clothing so that no one can see or put makeup over it to where no one can see it. So I think purple is appropriate color for Domestic Violence Month. Well, when women stay simply because of finances, it's really because their self-esteem has been broken and brought down so low that they don't think that they have enough intelligence to make their own money and survive on their own. And that oftentimes leads to the situation that actually will cause her own death. And then there's one other thing that I'd like to warn women about, and that is what's called the cycle of abuse. Yeah. You know, he wants to come back. You're feeling low. The finances are crunching in on you. Yeah. The kids are wanting the kind of clothes that all the other kids at school wear. And your job is just basically a minimum wage job. 
And yeah, you let him come back. So he comes back. And when he comes back, oh, you have a honeymoon. <laughs> There's flowers and dinners. He helps with the housework. Yeah, he even mows the yard. He does the things that a husband is supposed to do for a limited amount of time. Because remember, this is the honeymoon and the honeymoon does not last forever, does it? You know what I'm talking about. And each time you let the abuser come back, the honeymoon cycle gets a little shorter and a little shorter and the bruises get a little bigger. Sometimes the abusive man or the abusive woman will make it appear that their spouse is clumsy and does a lot of falling, you know, accidentally falling out the door, accidentally falling over a concrete block outside, accidentally falling and stumbling over the rug in the kitchen or the living room. And they make it look as though they're innocent. So the cycle abuse stops quicker and quicker each time. And your time is getting closer and closer to the time that he may have you disposed of. Hmm. So why do they stay? Actually, it's dangerous for a woman to leave a man or a man to leave an abusive woman. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Especially when the abuser has the mindset that, let's God, if I ain't gonna have her, nobody will. You ever heard that attitude? Yeah. And that's whenever most plots for murder are considered and carried out. Women don't leave because they're afraid of being killed even if they do leave. If they leave and they're found by the spouse, the, the abuser spouse, chances are they're gonna be shot. Chances are they aren't gonna survive. Yeah, this is a serious talk. That's why I like to be like an eagle. I like to soar way high. How about the storm clouds? And you do too. I like sunshine. <clears throat> you see, some women actually feel responsible for the actions of their partner. They, oh, he's, he is addicted to drugs. He's addicted to alcohol. He's addicted to gambling. That's why he can't spend his money to work around the house or make repairs. You ever heard those excuses? <laughs> really, uh, the abusive man that's not taking care of his own home is, um, I think he's the one that's got the problem, not the wife. <laughs> you see, another thing is these abusive men abusive spouses, they make you feel like everything that goes wrong is your fault. That's right, they do. And have you noticed that when your friends see you in the grocery store or at church or around town, they avoid you? You see them whispering and you think, I'm sure they're not whispering about me. What did I do? Well, hate to tell you this, but they probably are whispering about you because that wonderful husband, part of his manipulative uh, persuasion to keep you isolated is to tell all the neighbors and all the church people that you're really nuts. <laughs> yeah, uh, your sickness, my sickness, and the medication I take causes me to act in bad ways. 
and then the, the it just goes on and on and on. The things that they tell about you behind your back, uh, they're hilarious. And then one day, one woman had the courage to ask me. <laughs> I didn't know you did that. Do you know what he said? I said, what did he say? <laughs> uh, I mean, they just get ridiculous because it's their pitiful attempt to isolate you from any of your family, any friends, any club members, or anybody else. They want you completely in their control and in their grip. Be careful, ladies. Please don't turn me off. Listen, you know what I'm talking about. Did you ever see the old movie called The Burning Bed? That wasn't a hot bed of intimacy. That was a hot bed when that woman set it on fire. Okay. Abusive abusers will call you very vile and ugly names. Um, if someone else in your family calls you those names, then the abuser will say, oh, Oh, no, they're not going to call you that. You're my wife. They can't get, about, get away with calling you that. Well, it's not that he loves you that he's saying that so much because it's more that he wants to manipulate you to where that you will believe everything he tells you and not what your daughter or your son or your aunt or your cousins tell you. He wants to manipulate he wants to be the one in control. Do you recognize any of these signs, ladies? Do you? You might consider finding a place of refuge. See, most abusers are very possessive. They don't want you having friends. You are their personal property and you support them financially. You're the one that washes their clothes, gives them their foods, and beds them down when they're home. A possessive little man. Your money, your inheritance belongs to them. That's the way they think. And they defy you to not give them what they're asking for. Many abusers are just jealous. And their jealousy goes beyond rational. Um, they will accuse you of being unfaithful. That's because they've already been unfaithful. And their conscience bothers them. And so they also accuse you of it. Basically, to try to start an argument or a fight. To where he feels that it's all right to hit you. And treat you in ways he should not. When the man puts you down verbally, that's called emotional abuse. And that's just as bad as physical abuse. When the abuser is stepping out and cheating on you with other women, that is also abuse. That is emotional abuse. That has broken the marital contract. He will tell you that nobody likes you. Nobody wants to be around you. That's what the abusive spouse will tell you. You know, <laughs> um, jealousy is a bad thing. Sometimes the abuser will go so far as to threaten you as well as your family and the children. Recently, I read a sad story. Well, it's been happening more, especially since this pandemic thing. But men will go in and they will kill the wife, kill everyone in the home, including their own biological children. That's not normal, ladies. You need a place to go. You need a refuge. You need to find a refuge and get out of that relationship. How do I know? I've lived it. <clears throat> a 
Ladies, you're smart. You're intelligent. You are somebody worthwhile. You are not to be a doormat. You're not to be a punching bag. You are worthwhile. I cannot tell you that enough. But you must save your own life and you must save your own children's lives. Recently, I heard of a woman that drove hundreds, thousands of miles to rescue her own daughter from a bad situation. And I think that woman deserves all the praise and congratulation that we can give her. Because when your own child is involved in the abuse, mamas know. So ladies, look up. Let's put on some eagle mentality. And I'm going to have a short one tomorrow about eagles once again in the morning. But those of you that have stuck with me to the end, I beg you, get rid of your abuser. You are strong and you are intelligent and you are beautiful and you are worthwhile and you have a, a reason to live and contribute to our society today. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Leave me a comment below. We'll talk later.